So here I went on the web and I googled, you know, how to do a practice problem, or not how to do a practice, a practice problem, but, you know, law of syllogism practice problems. So I went on Google and I searched for practice problems for the law of syllogism. And this is one of the problems that I ended up coming across. So I'm going to try to do this, you know, without editing this video so you can see my thinking process. So that's the purpose of this video. So you can see, you know, into my mind, I guess you can think about it that way. All right, because understanding the thinking process is very important. And I just want to be able to share that with you. Okay, so here it says use the law of syllogism to draw a conclusion. So I need to know the law of syllogism in order to be able to do this problem. And they want me to come up with a conclusion. And here it says we have two conditional statements. If an animal is a red wolf, then its scientific name is Canis rufus. And if an animal is named Canis rufus, then it is endangered. Okay, so they want me to use the law of syllogism to come up with a conclusion from these two conditional statements. And if you're given two conditional statements and they want you to use the law of syllogism, it's, you're, it, you're all right to assume that they're both going to be true conditionals because law of syllogism states that you have, they have to be true. And I use the symbol from law of syllogism to help me understand or help me uh, come up with my conclusion. So law of syllogism, if you studied it enough, which that's important, make sure you do know the law of syllogism and not confuse it with law of detachment because that could happen. But the law of syllogism is you have basically two conditionals and maybe you can remember the law of syllogism because usually when they ask you, you can see we, we have two conditional statements here. So that might be one technique if you might confuse it, but law of syllogism does use two uh, conditionals. So here we have two conditionals, and in the law of syllogism, you need, you know, one of the conditionals has this form. Your second conditional would be of the form Q and R, and then based on this, therefore, so those three dots means therefore, so, you know, my conclusion would be, P implies R. So that's what a law of syllogism lets me do is if I have two conditional statements where this is like the setup, what this is what it looks like, then I'm able to conclude the, a new conditional statement. Okay? So meaning that from the first conditional statement, I take the hypothesis, I take my conclusion from the second conditional statement, and I can come up with a new conditional statement. Because if this implies Q and Q implies R, then I know P has to imply R. Alright. Let's see. It's almost like, I'm thinking of, if you know the transitive property, if you've ever seen this, A equals B, B equals C, then A equals C, right? If A is equal to B and B is equal to C, Right, both of these are equal to the same thing. Then I know that A has to also equal C. That's one of the things that I'm thinking of just now for law of syllogism, where you know if this implies you know, one, one implies another, and you take that same thing and that implies another, then that first one has to imply that last part, right? Because they're connected. I don't know if that that helps. But now that I know law of syllogism, this is the setup. I'm gonna convert these into you know, symbolic form as well. So, if an animal is a red wolf, so whatever comes after if, that is my hypothesis. So I'll put P here. So, if an animal is a red wolf, then its scientific name is Canis Rufus. So, that's going to be my conclusion, Q. And then I have an animal, if an animal is named Canis Rufus, so notice here, this is the same exact, saying the same exact thing that I have here. If an animal is named Canis Rufus, well, that's what they were talking about in this conclusion, Canis Rufus. So then, I would not label this as a new, you know, letter. I would call this one Q also because these two are, you know, the same things. So I'm taking this conclusion, and now it became my hypothesis in this uh, conditional statement. So if an animal is named Canis Rufus, then 
it's endangered. So if I look at here, this is endangered, and it has it's not the same thing. It's not mentioned in this hypothesis. It's not mentioned in this conclusion, right? It's not this. So then since it's not either P or Q, then it has to be a new letter. So I'll call it R. Because sometimes you could have where it repeats, right? Like, you know how the Q's repeated? Well, it's possible that this could have been the same thing as this one. I, I don't know. It could have been something like that. But it's good to go back and check everything just to make sure, you know, everything's organized well. So I can see that we have P and Q, Q and R, right? There's no repeats of anything. And now I'm going to take this and put it into symbolic form down here. So my first conditional has this setup, P implies Q. My second conditional is Q implies R, right? And we're assuming both of these to be true because, you know, they're telling us to use a law of syllogism, so they have to be true. And my conclusion then, according to the setup, right, it has to be that P implies R. Well, what is that actually in terms of a sentence or a conditional statement? P implies R. So I can write a new conditional statement, and that would be if, so the P, right, comes after if. So if an animal is a red wolf. So if an animal is a red wolf comma then then I gotta look at R it is endangered it is endangered so if an animal's red wolf that was the P if an animal's red wolf then R well R is this it's endangered and you can see that it does make sense because if an animal is red wolf, then it's Canis Rufus. That's the scientific name. And if an animal is named Canis Rufus, then it's endangered. So since these are connected, then I know that if an animal is red wolf, then it has to also imply that it's endangered. Alright, so that's this is how you use law of syllogism to come up with a conclusion. So you have to look at the notation. You know, the symbolic does help. And then you take whatever your sentences are, you know, label them, and then represent it in notational form like I did right here and then you come up with your conclusion using the law of syllogism because the conclusion for law of syllogism is this part here that's your conclusion and then we know this conclusion is true because of the if you go back to the uh, truth table examples for uh, law of syllogism that big truth table go back and check you can see that Anytime you have two conditional statements, you know, of this format where they're both true, then I know the first fact that the final conditional statement formed by taking this hypothesis and this conclusion will also be true. So this is, uh, you know, this is why law of syllogism works. Because if you look at all the different possibilities in that truth table, each case where this we had this set up, the you know, the, the new conditional form was also true in each case. Alright, so that's the power of logic. And that is law of syllogism.